Hello wonderful people, welcome back to Coffee Over Apples. My name is Steph and today I'm here with the coffee book tag. I was tagged by the wonderfully amazing Ansu from the channel Read with Ansu, so please definitely go and check out her channel. She is wonderful. She does these really cute creative bullet journals and talks about some really great books. I've gotten some great recommendations from watching her videos, so I am so excited for doing this video. Thank you so much Ansu for tagging me to do this. The original creator of this book tag is from the channel Bangity Bang, so I'm going to leave a link in the description below to the original coffee book tag video. And at the end of this video, I'm going to be tagging some other people to do this as well. Also, full disclosure before I start talking about this, I am currently a recovering coffee addict. And it's really ironic that I'm doing this tag now, now that I've quit coffee very recently. You would think with the amount of withdrawal that I had that I was coming off of crack and not coffee. Like, I love coffee, I adore coffee, it's delicious. But the fact that it took over my life to the point where I could not function if I didn't have a cup of coffee in the morning is a huge problem. So I'm going to continue enjoying coffee once I get my coffee addiction under control. It's so good. So the first question is called Black Coffee. This is for a tough book to get into but has diehard fans. A Court of Thorns and Roses. I... Mmm, I'm very picky about my fantasy. I think this is like fairies or something. Um, fairies are not my thing. Um, I have not read this series, but everyone and their mom talks about the series, and I guess at some point I'm gonna have to give it a shot. So if you wanna see me read this, please let me know in the comments below. If enough people <laughs> push me to read this, if enough people try to convince me that I need to read A Court of Thorns and Roses, I will read it. But it's not very high up on my TBR. The next question is called Peppermint Mocha, a book that is very popular during the holiday season. So I don't read books depending on the holiday. Like I don't read beachy things in the summer and I don't read snowy things in the winter. I just read whatever whenever. Um, so. Um, one book that I saw that was pretty popular, I think was it last year during the holidays or something like that? It was this book called Let It Snow by, I think it had John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Warren Miracle I think the name is, and I think I heard of this from Books and Lala. Um, I don't really have much interest to reading in it, I've never read a John Green book, which might surprise a couple people. Um, if anybody's read this, let me know how much you enjoyed it. Next question is called Hot Chocolate, and this is for a childhood favorite book. And for this, I'm going to go with The Bridge to Terabithia, which is a book that I read almost every year for about, I don't know, maybe like 10 years or something like that when I was a kid. There was this kind of ritual that this book would bring me comfort. When I'm sick at home with a fever, it's probably the only time that you will catch me doing a 24-hour readathon because I, I just can't keep my attention on books for that long. But since I use it as an escapism, when I'm home and I'm super sick, I read a lot, like non-stop, to help get my mind off the fact that I'm super sick. So, A Birch of Terabithia is a book that I would read every time I was feeling down, and it was just so sweet, but it's also very sad, and I just love that book. It's a classic. The next question is called Double Shot, a book that had you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. For this, it is definitely the entire Illuminae series, especially the first two, I want to say. I just devoured this book in a very short amount of time and absolutely loved it. I need to reread this in the very near future. I'm hoping that someone turns this into a movie. This would make a really great action-packed movie. I don't know how they're going to interpret it visually, being that it is full of like text messages and emails and different correspondence, but it is awesomely, it is just a very cool story and very action packed and I had no idea what was going to happen at any time and both the first and second volumes turned into directions that I had no way of knowing where it was going and I loved every second of it. The next question is called Starbucks, a book that you see everywhere. 
this book is all that anybody talks about. I feel like is one of the most read books of 2020 and you know what? I just don't care because I've never read The Hunger Games. Don't come for me. I have not read The Hunger Games um, just because it didn't interest me. Which doesn't make sense because you guys know that I love dystopian fiction and this is definitely a dystopian story. However, it scares me a little bit to read books that are hyped by everybody else because what if I don't love it as much as everyone else did? I don't know, but I have zero interest in this book mostly because I haven't read or watched The Hunger Games. Um, again, let me know in the comments down below if you think I'm making a huge mistake by not checking out these books. The next one is called Hipster Coffee Shop. And this is to give an indie author a shout out. So I want to give out a shout out to a YouTube author and that is Savvy Writes Books. I am going to leave a link to Savvy's uh, channel down below, but Savvy is an indie author, currently works for a small publishing company, but has their own business in which they create children's books that are based off of the stories of real life dogs and then that money and then I think profits from those book sales go towards uh, local dog shelters. I haven't had the chance yet to read any of their books, but I am super interested in every title that they've published so far and cannot wait to pick them up. So hopefully in the near future, my goal is to support a small business owner and purchase one of Savvy's books. Savvy's channel is really great because, because Savvy's always talking about supporting independent booksellers and small businesses and we love it. Next we have Oops I Accidentally Ordered Decaf, a book that you expected more from. For this I gotta go with a book that I DNF'd and that was The Fireman by Joe Hill. Now this was a super expected five star read for me for multiple reasons. One, Joe Hill is the son of Stephen King who you guys know I absolutely adore. So it's not that I was expecting him to write like his dad, but rather that I was expecting to enjoy his writing in general. And every time I've ever picked up a Joe Hill, it's always been a DNF. Makes, I don't know what it is, something about his writing just doesn't do it for me. But this is a dystopian fiction about a disease, giving me the stand vibes, a disease that if you get it, it sets your body on fire. And there's a woman who was a school nurse and she ends up in this community of people who've somehow survived through the disease. They've built antibodies towards it and the world's kind of ending and I thought it was going to be freaking awesome. Was it? Absolutely not. I was bored. I didn't care about any of the characters. There were pop culture references in here that just seemed completely unnecessary. Um, Stephen King has this thing in his books where he references a lot of like alternative rock songs or he references a lot of lines from alternative rock which is a genre of music that I enjoy and um, it was attempted to be done in here but it didn't add it didn't add anything to the story like usually when it's done it's in a way of getting to know the characters a little bit better or like to make some sort of connection within the story or build upon something but here it was just like this random piece of information that did not help me get to know any character any better i just didn't care and the last question is a perfect blend a series that is both bitter and sweet but ultimately satisfying and for me and I think a lot of people are going to disagree with this but I absolutely adore this in case you don't know already and that is the Game of Thrones series by George R. R. Martin. I adore Game of Thrones. It is so... there's... it's just so... it like if you love horror I feel like if you are a fan of horror you might enjoy this because there is so much there's so many battle scenes, so many horrible things happen in here. There's so many underdogs. Anyone can die at any time. You're rooting for a whole bunch of people and it's just you don't you don't know where it's going to go. Some things are very similar to the TV show, but the TV show stopped adapting from the books at a certain point because the last book is not yet written. So there are some things that are a bit different in the series from the TV show. So if you haven't read the books, I definitely recommend you read them if you did enjoy the show. 
but man, it's like at the end of the book, at the end of every book, the cliffhanger is just oh, so horrible and so good and mm, 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 mm. it's just so delicious. So now I'm going to tag a couple people to do this video. Once again, thank you Ansu for tagging me in this video. I'm so happy to have done this. The people I'm going to tag are Sandy from Sandy Goldston Booktube, Jessa from Gavin with Jessa, Susan from Susan is Reading, Natalie from Pastel Writer, and Eric from Break Even Books. Okay guys, definitely please go check out everyone's channel that I just mentioned. They are all amazing booktubers who talk about a variety of things. They all have really interesting videos about books, about reviewing, about writing. Links to everyone's channel will be in my description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!